Zulu. Let's kick it off. Okay, good morning. Uh, this is my logo. I pride myself that all the time, I am a leader that gets impact out of chaos. So this is my logo, and we will talk about this later. What I have learned and what I will share with you is leadership is about impact. If you do not have an impact, you are not a leader. Impact starts and ends with leadership. Whether it's starting a company, launching a new product, fundraising, entering a new market, building a new system, or going after a new customer segment. Even changing your neighborhood, social change, everything is about high impact leadership. So what I want to do I want to share with you a personal story and the secrets behind it. Since I was in the Boy Scouts till now, what I have used to create impact and uh, make things better for everybody that I have worked with. So I am obsessed with what worked for me and what did not work. Remember my experience, I am 62 years old now, the context of leadership can change. The content did not change for me. Context can change. However, the content is the same. And I will share with you this content that I have. Before we start, I want to make sure that everybody sees this. He has a split screen. He sees the slide, one third by two thirds. So we are connected. So now I want to kick off with a poll. Uh, can you share the poll, please? Can you please answer the question simple, agree or disagree? There are seven questions there. I don't know if they are answering. Let's see how many people are. Answer. Okay, guys, keep it up. We need more people to answer. We are uh, nearly 70 people. Vote, it's a democracy, guys. It's also anonymous, but whatever you believe, you can just click. I can see you. But why the seventh and eighth question are the same? هل بدك تشتغل فينا انت هلا؟ عمري بدك تشتغل فينا؟ 
لا بس جاست كويستشن يعني ليش أنا ولا لاني صرت قريب ثلاث مرات مشان الاقي فرق بيناتهم صراحه بس شيل اياها اوكي دم اوكي وي ار نيلي ذير Okay, we are done, guys. We're gonna end polling now, and we'll see the answers as expected. Share results. Yani, let me share with you. Leadership is everyone's business. I believe, in my experience, that it is everybody's business. Whether you're a sales manager, you are a big entrepreneur, or even a spouse at your home, you are a leader. Whether you are the husband or the wife, you are a leader. Everybody has a leadership role. I believe leadership can be learned because all of us, we are born and made as leaders. It's up to us to develop the leadership skills as we talk about. Again, leadership, all of us agree, is a relationship between those who choose to lead and those who choose to follow. It's like a relationship, the quality of this relationship affects the impact. Leadership is self-development, as you know, and it is a journey. All of us, we are agreeing, and it is a choice. You, it is your choice to say, I want to be a leader, I want to lead, whether I want to lead a product launch or I want to lead a change on the ground or whatever. And we have a repetition, uh, seven and eight, you are correct, Omari. So moving. My, my, the way I see leadership is moving people. Moving people to do something, to achieve something, to go to a new place. And in order to move people, people who are willingly want to follow, they need to see in their leader that he's forward looking. He is inspiring or she is inspiring. Competent and honest. This is based on worldwide research of what do people want from their leaders, right? So the idea, all of this that they are looking for, it leads to what? They want credible leaders. And let me tell you my experience. If you are not credible, people will not follow you willingly. And I want to underline willingly. If you want people to follow you, you need to be honest, inspiring, competent, and forward-looking. And all of this, it's about credibility. No credibility no leadership simple leaders in my experience at their best and based on what i have learned the last 30 years remember i'm a consultant so i study a lot and i believe leaders they are learners best leaders they are best learners so what i found that leaders they need to model the way what does that mean they earn credibility through their behavior, not their title. Through their behavior, not their title. They inspire a shared vision. Imagine and, yeah, an exciting space, an area where we want to go. This is very important to achieve this. And can we stop all this admin, please? Because it's distracting me. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just doing an admin because all the time. Uh, then challenge the process. I tell you, leaders, they are about changing the status quo. As a leader, you are about change. What you do is change. So this has to be part of your DNA as a leader. The other thing, leadership, whatever, is not on your own. 
you need to have others. And the other thing is, guys, trying to achieve something is not easy. It's ups and downs. So you need to all the time to encourage the heart. So in my experience, there are five practices of high impact leader. They model the way, they inspire a shared vision, they challenge the process, they enable others to act, and they encourage the heart. However, as we've said, leadership is about behaviors. I will share with you every practice, two major commitments, two major behaviors that it is very important that you learn and you practice as part of this. And I will tell you my experience with it and my stories. So now we will go to a poll. The second poll, please. There's no poll, huh? Maher, we lost it. Okay. Is the poll there? Yeah. So now people can answer. Okay. Quickly, please. It's easy. Three questions. Okay, good. So the first practice is about model the way. And these are some of the behaviors that you need to practice in model the way. And can we end the polling, please? And share the results. So all of us, we agree that we need to set a personal example of, for others, of whatever we do. People are watching us. We are on stage. Leaders, they are on stage. People are watching the, how, the way they talk, the way they speak, the way they tell stories. And the same thing, we want to make sure that people support the values we have agreed to. Let's talk about all of this in the behaviors. The first step, the first commitment in modeling the way is you need to clarify your values. And I, as I said, titles are not important, whether you are the owner of the business or you are head of finance. Titles, nobody cares. What is important, how you behave in front, this is how you earn the respect. And you start by clarifying the values. How? What I do, I look inside myself and my experience in life. What matters to me? What matters? If you come in, one of the key issues, my style of leadership, I take a stand. I am a principle-centered person. I take a stand. And if you are in my office, I have a shoe, shoe framed where I remember an incident here in our history in Iraq, when that person, young person threw that, that shoe on, uh, at uh, George Bush. Even if he got kicked, I believe all the time leaders, they have to take a stand. So this is something I believe in, and there are a number of principles I believe in based on my experience. Once you go in, you need to find a voice for these principles because you're going to talk about them. However, you are not on your own. These, they need to be aligned with your team and your organization values. Because what I found out, if your values and the organization and the team values are not aligned, 
يو ويل بي يعني بتعرف كيف حوار الطنشان يو ويل بي بيهيفينج توكينج دوينج سو ماني ثينجز which are not aligned and it will end up creating lots of confusion in the organization. People, they get confused, especially when you are under a challenge, something that does not work in the organization. You need to fall back to your principles, the shared values that you have. Let me give you an example. These are examples of values from being an adventurous company, adventurous team, to creativity, to decisiveness, to ethics, to excellence, to stability, to how we view work in the organization, how we recognize people, the freedom to speak in the organization. These, you need to find your values and the organization values. And as a leader, you want to make sure that they are aligned. So this is the first step. It is very critical. And let me share with you, I used to be, the, I started in an organization called Accenture. And I became, from young person, I became the managing partner for the Middle East. And this firm, we had clear values. Young people to senior partners, we lived by them. Stewardship, we cared about what we leave behind. Whether it is the organization, the project, the client. We always, best people is key because we are a consulting firm, professional service firm recruiting, attracting, recruiting, and retaining the best people was key for us. Making an impact, or what we call the client value creation, is key to us. We were obsessed by it in solving clients' issues, creating opportunities and delivering on them. The idea of being one global family, it was key. The other thing is respect for the individual. For example, we never criticize the person, we criticize his work. We work with him on developing his skills. So all the time there was that respect for the individual and above all the integrity, i give you an example. If we used to fill out time reports, if you put the wrong stuff intentionally and you try to commit fraud on your time or expenses, these were ground for firing. You were fired. Integrity was key. So this is important. These values, do you know what it led? It led that our employees, they gave it all, their best. We used to work. I was a young person until I became a senior partner. All of us, we viewed the organization as our organization because of the values we believe we believed and we shared. The other thing, all the time, our clients get the maximum benefit. And I'll give you an example. I had a client in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Hollandi Bank, and we had an issue building their general ledger system. And we screwed up. Because they were not happy, I paid them back their money, nearly $600,000. I gave them back the money. But because I did this, we ended up getting more than $60 million worth of business over a period of seven years. So, so to us, living by our values, delivering to our, to our values, it creates peep employees, gave it their all, and the clients believe that they will get maximum value. So maximum benefit for the relationship. So values are not this, uh, fad, uh, nice to have, they are critical, critical. The second thing is, as a leader, I have to walk the talk. I have to set the example. And how I do this is my actions, people are watching it. My actions, people are watching it, and I, it has to be based on the values. The same thing, I want to make sure everybody follows these actions, these shared values. And this is where we set an example. The last thing you want, that you don't walk the talk. And remember, in our part of the world, this, we have a crisis of trust. We do not trust our leaders. So this, this is an issue. 
This is an issue. And by walking the talk and working with your team to walk the talk, if they see you, let me give you an example. Because I am project oriented. And when I was running a project for building the stock exchange in Saudi Arabia, I used to be the first one to go to the client site and leave the last because we had a deadline to meet and I wanted to send a signal of discipline and commitment and I was the first one there. I did not go late because I was late the night before and I said, no, when, when I behave according to what I commit to, our values. And it's very important that I made everybody follow these shared values. They are simple things that we follow. It's not rocket science. Example, how you spend your time ha has to be aligned with your values. How people see you, how you run your meetings. If you go in and you say we are a disciplined organization and there is no agenda, there is no outcome of the meeting, and you go into the meeting and you talk about everything but the agenda, or there are key words that you have to use. For example, I believe all the time, I, my slogan is passion inspires, only discipline delivers. Because I have learned you can have passion coming out of your ears but only discipline will get you there. So this term, all the time I use, I use terms that are aligned with my values. This is the voice I give to our values. There are things that we, we, we avoid. I'll give you an example. Talking down about your clients. I'll give you an example of this. Sometimes my team used to come and they start talking down. Ah, oh, the client doesn't know. They are stupid. They, they are not disciplined. And I tell them, guys, listen. First of all, we exist because of our clients. And our clients, they have issues. That's why, that's why we are there. So all the time, they see us that we do not talk down our clients. So they look at the leader and we don't give excuses. The other thing, I use lots of stories stories about how people in our organization achieved something, served clients, solved a problem, uh, 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 dealt with a relationship issue with a client. I tell these stories. Leaders, remember guys, it is about communication. And all the time I say, many people communicate if you connect. If you want to be an inspiring leader, you need to tell stories. The last thing and more important, when you face difficulties, whether you lost a project, lost a sale, things are not do going well with a pitch, you do not get the funding, you have an issue with people watched you during the, uh, the, the COVID-19, they watch how you react to things. They watch you how you plan ahead, whether you are proactive or reactive. If you think you're going to bounce back or you're going to bounce forward. You know, these things, they watch you. They, they look at you and they see how you behave. And this is how you are setting the values. This is how you, people, how you can model the way. In summary, leaders, leaders, they have, as they say, they have no titles. It's something about your behavior. People are watching you on stage, what you do and what you don't do, what you say and what you don't say, how you react to challenges, how you respond to opportunities. This is how you model the way. Reflect on this because remember, leadership is a journey. And this session is not really about giving you uh, a master's degree in leadership. It is the first step in getting you to think of this journey, regardless of your position. And this is very important. I'm giving you lots of thoughts on this. So we move now to the next poll to talk about the next practice. Can we put the next poll, please?
working? My head, it's on now. Okay, great. Okay, guys. Five seconds. Yeah, it seems all of us we agree that how important it is to have to envision the future and have an exciting vision and dream of what could be. To me, envisioning the future is about possibilities. And do you know what my experience? It creates human energy. This is how I look at it. If you do not have an exciting vision and it is aligned, you don't have human energy. A vision, in my experience, pulls people forward, pulls people into the future. The, the vision is not for you as a leader to keep it. It's not for you as a head of a unit to keep it. It's about you talking in an emotional, you need to be excited about, but what is important? This vision has to be aligned. And I tell you, if you want commitment, you don't command it, you inspire it. Remember, you don't command commitment. You don't ask for commitment. You inspire commitment. People will not follow you if they are not excited about where are you taking them. Remember about credibility. So this is important. They love possibilities. So it is all the time, part of the practice is this visioning exercise of the future. How you look, where are you heading? What is so exciting? What is happening in the world currently? How do you bounce forward? How do you bounce forward? COVID-19. What is so exciting? What are the opportunities there? What are the trends? And, and right now we are talking about what they say, the low-touch economy. Low-touch economy. How can we be in this low-touch economy? So it's very important. In my experience, when I left Accenture, I set up a firm called Next Move, a management consulting firm. I was 42 years old. And I had a dream that I want to make major impact on the world, at least my region. So what I did, I put a vision, I am imagining myself, that I want to introduce innovations to improve the way business works and unleash their potential. This is my obsession. My obsession was every individual in an organization, and a business, they have potential to be unleashed. And I need to use innovative techniques, innovative methods to have offerings to do it. And this is how I imagined ourselves. This, this was my, our vision. So not only to have a vision, but also you need to enlist others, people, they need to subscribe, they need to buy into your vision. As a leader, <coughs> if they do not subscribe, you're gonna be on your own going to be this lone ranger in the mountain on your own, nobody following you. So you have to enlist others. <clears throat> and you know, my, the, most, the most effective technique is genuine, genuine appeal to shared aspiration. Nobody wants to be stupid. Everybody wants to be part of a winning team. It is the job of the leader to sell a genuine vision for people to enlist in, to buy into it. So they become owners where they want to go. They want to believe that you are taking them to a place that they want to be there and they are willingly, they will follow you. Whether it is you're trying to create a product that will change a certain sector. You want to be in gaming and you want to introduce a new kind of gaming. Maybe you want to get into gamifying giving. There's so many things that can be done. 
And let me share with you something I have always used to get people to enlist into our vision. Remember, we have talked about, can I have some water please, just a minute. There was this, all the time, I've learned this when I was young. This experiment, when they put a grasshopper in this, uh, what do you call it? Jar. And you know, the grasshopper wants to jump out. They covered it. And the grasshopper started jumping and its head hits the cover. After one hour, they removed the cover. The grasshopper could not leave the jar. We have limited their vision, their potential. And this is how I got all my people in Next Move to subscribe into our vision term. Guys, we want to let people and businesses out of jars because we want to unleash business and people potential. And this is how people got excited. I found an analogy. I told a story and I said, nobody wants to be a grasshopper in a jar. No business wants to be a grasshopper in a jar. No country wants to be a grasshopper in a jar. And this is how I ended up with, in two years, we had 70 consultants with offices in Riyadh, Jeddah, Doha, and Amman. And then I sold it after five years for tens of millions of dollars, yes, tens of millions of dollars, to a company listed on NASDAQ. And I really believe it was due to some to the leadership practices that I have used. And one of them is selling, shaping, selling, and enlisting people in a great vision. And what I have done, now I put my own fund and I will invest around the world, not in Jordan, around the world. I have my own fund called Connect Capital. In Jordan, I only I am a social guy. I'm, يعني هنا بالأردن أنا سوسو برا أنا سوسو الوحش. Can we move to the next uh, poll, please? Because we want to move to the next practice. Okay, so think of it, let me give you the bottom line. At the end of the day, we are leaders, they are masters of change. If you are not changing things, it's changing the status quo, you are not a leader, period. In my book, you are not a leader. So leaders all the time, they are smelling opportunities, they are looking and he can see around the corner. So leaders, they need to be searching for opportunities because you are about change. So challenging the process is key, is key. And simply the way I do it, all the time I seek it. I seek it. I look for it. I am, I, you know, like, all that I'm thinking, how can I improve things? What are the problems there? What is the trend around the world? All the time, you know what? I, I really look outward to learn from other industries. All the time, I venture out. I venture out to look at other sectors, other industries, other countries, because I want to improve everything. And I want to share with you the best example, because the way I look at it, after I experiment and I pay because I'm not, I'm not worried 
I, I think of new stuff and I start experimenting. Because do you know what? I believe life is my lab. I, be, I live in a sandbox. Leaders who want to create great companies with great impact, they need to be best learners. And life is their lab. This is how I look at it. And, and what I do, I, all the time I am obsessed with small wins and I learn from experience. And let me share with you an example. All the time, as a leader, I think in a different way. I've chosen to be different. I've chosen to see the apple as square. It's my job. It's my choice. I, this is how I want to live. And what I have done, and I give you an example of my work. Like when it comes to innovation, when in Jordan here, I looked at social pains and passion to serve and my management theories. And I said, what is common between them? And I found what is common between them. يعني الفلافل انا زي ما اللي بيعرفوا انا بحب الفلافل وشركه مع اي ام اي ام بارتنر ان وي بيبل ان دبي وي هاف تشين كولد اوبريشن فلافل سو فلافل از فيري كريتيكال ان ماي لايف فيري سنترال اند وات اي هاف دون اي لوكت ات فلافل اند اي كيم اب وذ سمثينج اي كول ذا فلافل ثيوري اباوت سكيلينج تشينج ذا واي اي ثينك از ا ليدر اي ونت تو تشينج This, uh, to make an impact, social impact on Jordan. So I was inspired how people fry falafel. And I came up with that falafel is standard to scale it, needs to be quick, simple, mass appeal, filling, affordable, local ingredient, repeatable and scalable. This is my analysis of it. It doesn't matter. You can find your own analysis, but I have chosen as a leader, I want to change the process. And look at the impact. يعني the impact of this it's about scale and once you decide they want to innovate as a leader there is no limit whether you are in gaming in flowers in uh, medical stuff in uh, uh, god knows what once you decide to innovate and leaders who are high impact leaders They need to innovate the process. And it's not only about the market, it's internal. You know? So all the time, we need to remember leaders, they are about change. Moving to the fourth practice, and let's do a poll, please, of the behaviors. خلاص اوكي بلاش طب اروح لهم على اخر شو اوكي
you know the other thing I have learned that you don't do things on your own. It is very important that if you want to be somebody who can pull people to follow you willingly, they need to trust you. And they have to feel that you have their interest at heart. You are taking them somewhere that they want to be. Building trust is very important. So this, this behavior, whether you stand for them, whether right now, give you an example. If you are there, they have watched you. How you behave during COVID-19. If you were out there trying not to support your employees and their families. If you're trying to, Allahumma sa'aka nafsi, you're only thinking, you are living a movie, you are the only character in the movie. You have just destroyed trust. But if you are out there trying to help and support, because remember the moment of truth, it's about difficulties. When they need you, this is where they, you can build trust. And as we said, it is about facilitating relationship. The last thing you want is to make your employees feel weak, exposed. They will not stay. Your job as a leader is to build that relationship with them, to take and all the time and say, you need to be interested, not interesting. And this is key. And I know lots of entrepreneurs, they are busy with their work. And sometimes they forget about their employees. You are making a big mistake. Because at the end of the day, major impact and successes that's not achieved by one person. And you need to enable others to act. So this is fostering collaboration. The second item is your job is to strengthen others. And this obsession is in building and investing in them, giving them the freedom within structure to decide, to do their own projects, to venture out and be you know, candid a project in their own. Because remember, I see lots of entrepreneurs, they are breathing in the ears of their followers or employees. And this frustrates people. So it's very important to be thinking, how can I strengthen others? It's my job. It's not only the HR department. It is the leader's job to strengthen others. It's my job. I remember all the time when I was in Accenture and in Next Move, I used to call myself, I am more or less the HR manager because my business is about people. I am the people leader. I enable others, and this is key, this is key. So it's not something, and I see it a lot, that, ah, oh, no, this is the HR department job. No, no, it's your job. It's your job. People matters, it's your job, whether you are the entrepreneur, or the sales manager, or the finance manager, or the HR manager. It's your job, your people, it's your job. I give you an example of what I do. Simple formula I use, and I will tell you about leadership later on with it. My job is whenever I have individuals filling jobs, all the time I know the job and the roles in that job and the individuals, and I become obsessed in how can I enable these roles to be performed at higher I've learned this from Accenture. I am obsessed. My job is to enable people on my team to perform at a higher level. And I do it scientifically. I analyze the job. I work. I, I think most of the people listening to me right today, they are smaller companies. And it is very important that everybody gets involved in the job design. And how can we enable these jobs? And I will give you my job design next. When I, when I go through, uh, I wrap it up. Then I want to move to encourage the heart. Something 
It is, I'm, I'm moving, I don't want to do the, they shared the phone? No, no, no don't share. Uh, the, the other thing people, and uh, they think it's all uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they think celebrating and recognizing contributors, this is Western style. I have learned it in our part of the world. It's so important for you to recognize, to recognize people. Show appreciation for individual excellence. It's so important to tell thank you. And I know sometimes you get busy and you forget to say thank you. Thank you, it's so important because you are depositing in your employee's emotional account because they are watching you. If you don't thank you, if you don't say thank you and you don't show appreciation, they think you are abusing and abusing them. Why? It, and I, all the time, it doesn't cost a lot to say thank you. And also to celebrate other people achievements. It's so important. You know, when you celebrate victories, this is where I see creating that spirit of community. And all the time I look at football, when people win and they start celebrating, you create that community, bonding. And it's a leader's job to do this, to achieve this. It's, it has to be a practice that he or she uses. To wrap, and to wrap this, uh, remember, leaders, they're about getting to move people from one place to the other, whether it is taking them to launch a new product, to go into a new market, to address COVID-19 impact, to address COVID-19 opportunities, whether it's you want to, how we handle COVID-19 in every country, it is very important. And remember the word willingly. People willingly will follow leaders who are forward looking. They have a vision. This vision is shared with others. It's exciting, compelling, that will pull people forward. It is inspiring. They inspire people. They get them excited. And they are competent. They trust them that they can handle it. And above all, they are honest. And all of this, it's about credibility. Remember, credibility, without credibility, there's no high impact. If you are not credible as an HR manager or a sales manager or a technology manager or innovation manager, you are not a leader. And in order to be high impact, five practices I want to summarize. Model the way, it's not your title, it's your behavior. And you need to be an example. The way you talk, what you talk about, how you react to things, how you deal with clients, how you deal with difficulties, they are watching you. What you say and what you don't say. It is very important. The second thing is inspiring a shared vision. Shared vision is key because remember, you command commitment not by commanding it, by inspiring it. And a vision pulls people forward. It is you want to, they want to go to somewhere exciting. If you do not have this vision in your company that is simple and clear and exciting, you have, you, you have an issue. The last, the third thing is challenging the process. It's about change, it's about innovation, improving the company, looking outward, venturing out and all the time improving how you do things, how you launch products, how you serve your customers, how you market, how you sell your website. It is key. The other thing is thinking you cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. It is not the last thing you want to be, the only character in a movie. You cannot be that only character. You are the, the videographer, you are the hero, you are the horse, you are the gun, you are the criminal. 
you cannot be it goes it has to be a team and you have to enable others to believe in it believe in trusting you they are confident that they can achieve it and the last thing remember it is so hard growing a company it's so hard it's ups and downs and if you do not encourage the heart and support them and recognize them you're going to lose people so these are five practices all the time they are critical and if i want to wrap them up think of it look at this diagram to model the way you need to be inspiring you you need to be honest you have to be a real person you need to be a real person that they say i can trust this guy walks the talk he doesn't talk the talk he delivers what he promises he does what he believes the other thing is inspire a shared vision if you don't if they want by doing this you are forward looking and you are inspiring it is important so you are meeting these two dimensions of credibility challenge the process if you are not inspiring and competent you cannot change the process you cannot be inspiring but you are not innovative you cannot be inspiring but you are unable to implement you only come up with ideas but you cannot execute enabling others you need to be competent people they need to look up to you that you care about them they trust you and you're going to invest in them you have all the time i say leader power comes from knowledge authority and charisma this is very important to inspire to to enable others to uh, to achieve more to increase their level of performance and lastly encouraging the heart you need to be inspiring and honest so all of this it comes together practices and the dimensions of credibility vital if you let me share with you this is my card my view in my life in companies i uh, uh, i run whether directly or indirectly differs all the time i have three roles i am a business operator business developer and people enabler i have three major roles they differ from company to company and i have identified nine masteries that i need to be super sorry about the spelling the first one i need to have the heart and the skills of an entrepreneur and remember entrepreneurship is not a goddamn job entrepreneurship is a way of life the other thing i'm a problem solver all the time i enjoy and i practice i improve from my problem solving skills the other thing i am i want to be an innovator i want to think of big ideas and implement them i want to scale innovation i want to really think in a different way introduce something new i am a bar raiser يعني اذا بالعربي ما بيعجبني العجب ولا الصيام برجب يجوز الناس بيعرفها i all the time i'm raising the bar i challenge people collaborator i learned this from accenture you have to partner whether partnering within or partnering with others you have to collaborate the other thing to be a captivator and remember mastering communication not only to communicate but also to connect is very important whether to you with your people or your client so i work on this talent developer i take an interest in people and i study about how can i work on their psychology how can i get them to work harder again all that i love strategy and i have to strategize and lastly i work on mobilizing i am a mobilizer i like to mobilize people to do things energize them get them excited and i work on these masteries so this is my cookbook this is my card this is what i do this is where i live most of the time even when i do social work i apply this 
the final analysis, impact starts and ends with leadership, period. And you have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. Every day, today, and every day, you make decisions. I call this the fork. You need to decide. You need to decide. If life, if life is like a football game, right? What you want to be? A spectator uh, all the time doing this? A referee judging people, only judging the way they talk, the way they think? Only your job is to judge? Or you want to play the victim, the ball, and all the time uh, you, you, you victimize yourself? But once you choose you want to be a victim of the ball, you give us the right to kick you. Or you want to be Muhammad Salah. You want to be Muhammad Salah, you want to be a player. And this is your choice moving forward. I want to open if people they have questions and I will give you my insight. Guys, what I have shared with you, they are you're like planting the seeds regardless of your position, regardless of your position, regardless of your experience, regardless of where you are in the journey. I have used this stuff and throughout my journey and they worked, they worked. Of course, there are many other skills that you need to develop as I have shown you. There are different leadership concepts. At the end of the day, leadership is a practice you do every day. You are work in process. You are a, you're on a journey. Every day you practice leadership. The way you talk, the way you behave, the way you think, the way you respond. And I want to encourage you, as I said, to be a player because all of you guys are players. You are working in a tough environment called entrepreneurs and startups and trying to grow your company. And it's not a walk in the park, especially now. So now I am uh, great. You see, 60 minutes, 10.30 now, right? You see discipline? 10.30, done, finished. Passion inspires, discipline delivers. So now we can open it to questions. And who's going to handle the questions, uh, Nadine? Uh, it's by just opening their microphones and not raising hands. Uh, but uh, what me raising hands, huh? La, uh, raising you can ask me whatever you want, even personal questions. And okay. I remember I, I said questions and insight. I'm going to give you my insight. I, mean, I don't have all the answers. But can I have one question, please? Uh, I mean, if you الفلافل ثيوري هاي الفيديو صراحة تبي أنا استوديو ما فهمت شيء بالفيديو يعني شو شو الرابط العجيب بين الكومبوننت بالفيديو والفلافل طب اسمع أقول لك شغلي <تصفيق> أنت اليوم every maybe the majority of you guys you want to scale right to me scaling is different than growth growth is you can grow but maybe your costs will grow with your revenue. Scaling, the nice about that you can scale, you can have 10x, but your cost does not go 10x. So now, I, one of the, the jobs I worked in, in Jordan, our kids, they were playing in the streets, football, and they were being hit by cars. So we said, how can we get them in a protective environment to play, right? Part of my obsession in being an innovator, to challenge the process as a leader, one of the practices, I challenge the process, right? I challenge the process. I looked and I said, how can I, because I love all the time I was obsessed with uh, falafel, how people fry falafel in a very uh, quick way. They can scale it. They can have uh, five uh, 
trades and they start scaling, they start trying. So I was inspired and said, they can only do it if they have a standard, standard weight, standard size, standard ingredient, standard way of doing it. <clears throat> so I found out that in order to do, you have to have a scalable and repeatable process. <coughs> by being inspired by the falafel theory, falafel, I unpacked how they make falafel and I applied it to how we can make 1,200 playgrounds in Jordan the cost is 200 JDs per playground because I put them inside public schools. And I don't want to go into the details of this, but think of it as a leader. <coughs> you get inspired from something as simple as falafel and you create a scalable solution. So what I'm saying as a leader, you have to look around you. You have to get, you have to connect the dots get inspired from the little things in life and try to apply and come up with solutions to obvious pains or hidden pains or opportunities. And this is the example I try to give in our work. But offline, I can explain this to you. If you can uh, go through Nadine, I, because this is, uh, we are very proud of it. And we, we applied this, we created 650 startups in public schools, and right now we are fixing more than 128,000 uh, desks in public schools using the concept of scaling, using the falafel theory. <coughs> Maher, I have a question for you. I mean, 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 I <laughs> what I want to ask, what I want to ask, in these difficult times where money is extremely tight because of the COVID issue, uh, with the emotional support, because you mentioned in your presentation, you know, supporting, uh, leading by example, and, and supporting your team, supporting your, your employees in these difficult times. When money, when money is very tight at the moment, with emotional support and letting your employees know that you're there for them, would that be enough yani, at the moment you know, to, to tell them that you care, you want to be there, you want to help them, you want to support them? Would that, would the emotional support would be, would be a good example of leadership? Sure. Let me... Uh... Uh, answer you uh, first of all showing empathy is the first step showing that you care you are interested you are not only thinking of the business you are thinking of them because remember all of us we went through an adjustment you know all of us we went through this shock whether it is individuals family and business so it's very critical that first of all, you appreciate, you seek first to understand, then to be understood. You, you need, first of all, you need to earn the right to ask them to sacrifice. Yeah, hello, I'm sure he'll sign back in uh, again. It's his laptop. Hello, so Ali was loaded. I'm sure he'll join. Let me call him.
sorry, excuse me. While we're waiting, can I answer Hassan? Yes, of course, Reem. Hi. Hi, how are you? Very good. Please, Hi. Hassan, uh, we did a free tool, uh, and I'll share it with you now to check on employee well being because we also had to lower salaries. Uh, we were actually quite worried about uh, uh, the morale of the employees and how it affects their productivity and the teamwork. We also um, uh, we, we realized very quickly that also anxiety affects very much uh, uh, the productivity of the team from everything that's happening, but also when we lowered salaries, they were quite worried. And once um, I'll share with you the tool, we also um, uh, uh, published our results of how the employees are doing from a well-being and morale point of view, uh, but also if they have access to basic needs and how they're managing social isolation and all these things. But we also published what we did to address that. Uh, and we published resources on how to address uh, um, employee well-being at times like these. And I'm happy to tell you that when sometimes it's small things that we had to do, but the minute we did them, um, the productivity went up, uh, the morale went up. We did small things, so and 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 that cost us nothing, uh, to be very honest. Uh, but we saw innovation. Uh, we saw much higher dedication. Our revenues grew by 300% in the past three months. Uh, so. Morale is very, very important. Most importantly is, is that they feel that they're heard, uh, is that feel that any decision we take is actually taking everything that they're going through into account. Something as simple as going back to the office, a good 30% were not comfortable going back to the office, but also because we lowered the salaries, uh, we decided that we're gonna give them the choice to keep working from home to lower the burden of transportation costs. Right, because it did not affect uh, uh, our productivity. And the minute we did something like that, they actually were so appreciative that they ended up giving us even more work and more time and more productivity. Uh, our prototyping uh, went from 20 days to below 11 days to come up with a prototype for a pilot for a product like the one um, that we did. And so I think that morale, at least in our experience, morale really, really, um, affected uh, how they how they performed although it was not necessarily financial and the other thing we did just to also make up for the lowering of the salaries we said uh, we're converting the difference into stock options just so that they know that we're not um, if that makes any sense you defer the difference into stock option but yeah okay so so if someone so whatever we deducted from the salary was still owed to them uh, and and uh, we we uh, we are converting that into stock options. We're doing a mix of stock options and and um, and cash once okay. the company is able to do that. Yeah, sorry, Yes. Okay. simple. One, you need to show empathy. You care. Uh, simple specifics give you an example every when we came in some of uh, in some of the companies i am i can con i control we decided that the top guy will take uh, you know, a higher cut than all the employees all employees cut in salary we put it in a pool that we are going to be paying it back to them when things will get better. So right now, we put it as a liability on the company. These two things, other than showing empathy that we care, we took specific actions and commitment, right? It's not like, ah, oh, we're going to cut your salary and we will not pay you back and uh, we did some, uh, so this is leadership. The other, uh, the other, Im another important issue is how you deal with difficult employees. Because I am sure, I am sure, 
every company, they had employees who were difficult in this situation. And they watch you, how you deal with them. So it's very important as a leader to demonstrate an example how you are dealing with difficult employees. So this is, you know, like people who were, no, no, why are you cutting my salary? I'm going to go to the labor office, blah, blah. How you deal with this was very important. Uh, one thing I want to caution for, remember there was so much material on working from home and dealing with all this stuff. We got all of us overwhelmed with so much paper, so, mu so many ideas. A leader simplifies things. A leader picks maybe like five things we must be good at in the crisis. Five principles. So you need to simplify this to the employees. It's not like we start sending them paper and nobody reads. So it's, it's really important that we, we keep this in our mind. Are there any other questions? Um, I had a question um, from our side and, and related to the, uh, firstly, thank you very much for, for the fantastic insights and presentation. Um, related to the things like building playgrounds or fixing desks, um, how do you think you can maintain focus on the core of your business and scaling, you know, the revenue profit driving sides of the business um, while also uh, making a large impact outside of that in some kind of good work, such as the playgrounds or the, or the desks? Listen, the playgrounds, all the stuff I do this uh, uh, in Jordan, I have a social impact organization. It's not part of my core business. You know, so this is one thing. But what I want to make you, guys, I found that when your employees are involved in community work, they are better employees. It is very important that you as a community in this company, your company, that you have uh, an outside, what I call it, unconditional giving. You are cause driven in your spare time. You, you know, every individual has to have a passion project. And companies, they need to have a good cause that they rally around and they do work. It brings, uh, you guys become better people, better organization. And this is important. And especially, it will be nice, for example, uh, give me because I know there's somebody from Tamatam here. Yes, I uh, I'm actually from Tamatam. I okay. asked the original. I am here. Think <laughs> with, I have this obsession. How can we gamify giving? How can we get people to play and give, give money, support? So this can be a passion related to your business. You have your CSR program where you are the champions of gamifying giving. So think of it, it's aligned. And this is how a leader innovates, a leader inspires, you know? A, le a leader rallies, and this is so exciting. When you say, ah, Tamatan, they are the kings of gamifying giving in the Arab world. Just think of it. I'm gonna charge you for this idea, by the way. I was just going to say, I, uh, I would love to brainstorm some specifics on uh, around that concept. Uh, but, but you we are in do Jordan that, or we are in Jordan? Yes, we're all in Jordan, yes. So listen, pass by. I love this gamifying giving. I mean, we Fantastic. need to do it with, uh, you know, there are so many ideas, but we want to be, you know, culturally and traditionally and ethically compliant when we do gamifying. It's not going to end up in Las Vegas. Be careful. <laughs> would love to talk more about it uh, we'll be sure to get your details and uh, for some of myself or uh, Iyad will follow up thank you so much yeah. again really appreciate it questions Maher يعطيك العافية هلا والله أخبارك عدي وسلامين معك هلا 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 عدي وينك بالشايف توصل وين هيني موجود شايفني؟ اوكي 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 <تصفيق> عدي يلا سؤال 
So basically, one of the comments I got from the team members, Anna, okay, uh, was in your presentation, you used a lot of I as opposed to we. And what's your thoughts on that? Listen, what I wanted to say, I, because I am sharing with you my experience, right? I am sitting here, I am not a trainer. I'm telling you my story, my leadership story and my experience. That's why I say I, because I was involved, I was influential in doing this. As a leader, you are an individual, guys. You know, let me be very clear on this. You are the leader. People follow you. You are on stage. You make things happen because lead, organizations are shaped by their leaders. The style, the, leadership, the leader's philosophy. However, you cannot implement things without we. However, when you are telling your story, it has to find, do you remember when I started to say, you need to find your own voice, your own voice. It is very important that you speak from inside, you believe what you say. And it's okay to say I, it's okay, it's okay. I, I don't get, uh, by the way, I don't get into these cliches, I and we, all the stuff, bottom line, as a leader, you need people to achieve. However, you are the leader. You are the leader. You shape that organization, you know? Uh, and this is where uh, the, the wording, because I'm telling you my story with this leadership. And I'm not apologizing for it, by the way. It's I, you need to be, comes from outside. This is your story as a leader. You go out there and you write a story, and this is what I tell people. What is your story in life? You are writing it. Of course, you cannot write it if you are not a team player. You can be a writer at home writing poem, but if you want to play the game, you need to be a player with the team. Jawabtak, Adi? Ah, jawabni, Islam. عجبني الجواب؟ <تصفيق> أنا عجبني الجواب السؤال إذا التيم عندي عجب الجواب ولا لا؟ <تصفيق> لا اسمع Do you know what I, I tell you what it is very important also to understand and I want to encourage people to read because I, I, I studied they taught us this at Accenture there's somebody they call the intercultural differences and in our culture in the Arab world the power distance is high we look up to our leaders. This is part of our culture. Our culture, we look up to our elderly, our leaders. So it's very important to believe that you are there, they are scrutinizing you, what you do and what you say. And when they say that you are a decision maker, you are moving things, however, they see you consulting with them, listening to them, uh, sharing, the values. However, when you speak, people want to hear you. Don't apologize for it. They want to see, they want to hear your opinion, not are we, our opinion, our, no, 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 no. They want to hear you. Don't act. Be yourself. This is very important. And this coming from a 60-year-old guy who got kicked in the butt so many times. Listen, Shabab, listen. Habibi. new style. تغيير <تصفيق> ماهر انا وبتجاوب على اي اس اف باي ذا واي ماهر انا عندي سؤال هلا وات اف يور يور ا ليدر ان ا بوزيشن هاو هاو دو يو نو اف يور ا جود ليدر اور يور نوت ا جود ليدر ليتس سي انه يو ثينك اوف يور سيلف از از ان اكسلنت ليدر بس هاو دو يو فاليديت ذس از ذير ا تول يو كان يوز تو تيل يو and you know you're doing a good job leading your team or not how do you validate that listen i tell you what i do you know it depends first of all you need to ask yourself are you making a difference are you making a difference uh, people 
are they moving behind you willingly or they are afraid of you? You know, it's okay uh, to be strict, by the way. It's okay to be disciplined. It's okay to be a decisive decision maker. It's okay uh, uh, to encourage people with your own style. However, I can look myself, I look at three things in my opinion. One, am I making a difference? Are we successful in what we are doing? Whether it's a product that is launched, uh, people want to join my company, uh, my project experience, even if it's tough, but we end up re reaching where we want to be. So it's about making a difference. Second, it is how many people they are willingly following you. It's good. It's good that you are an organization that you don't have to play politics for people to follow you. You know, they are willingly following you. And all the org whether you are a unit manager or an entrepreneur running a company, it is very important that you look at the followers and you judge for yourself, do you have politics? Do people behave the same way when you are there and you, when you are not there? You need to know this. You need to know this because you are shaping as a leader the culture because you are the example for them. Think of it. All of us, we have younger brothers. Younger brothers, they look up to you. They see how you behave. So this is very important. The third item, and this is your own test. Are you honest or a bullshitter? Are you developing yourself and with the masteries to be a leader? That if you are, for example, let's pick on Tamatim. Uh, if you are in, in gaming, are you guys innovative? Are you guys up to date with this innovation stuff, the technology? Are you developing and developing others? So this is the competence. Are you inspiring? You know, or you are boring. You are not connecting. You cannot communicate. You cannot tell stories. People sit there. They don't see passion coming out of your ears. However, they see and they trust, you know, in your heart that you are thinking ahead. Because I tell you, at the end of the day, people, what do they want? They want to follow somebody who is taking them where they, to a place they want to be there. They trust him that he can get them there and he has their interest in his heart. You need to ask yourself this. You need to do that fellow check. I do this all the time. And especially, especially when I face trouble and I question myself, my decision. Because all the time we face this, I question myself, did I do the right thing? You know, this all the time, because you know how I look at it? I am work in progress. I am a project. I am somebody on a journey. I am writing my own story. And I want to say I am. I am writing the story. And we are writing the organization story. Guys, I want to highlight here, I'm talking about you as an HR manager, as a design manager, you know? It will be great, great, if your story is aligned with the organization's story. This is what, how I look at it. This is your job as a leader to align, to align and get everybody pulling and pushing in the same direction. Did I answer you? Yes. We have two minutes. We're approaching the time. Yeah, two minutes left, two minutes left. And I have another question. But is I would like to interfere and ask Mr. Uh, uh, thank Mr. Maher for taking time and sharing with us. This is Samir here from Flora now. It would be great if you can share with us a list of books or uh, references to read about the same topic. It would be great. Okay. Uh, what I will do, uh, this, what I, Anna, the more, there are two books that influenced my leadership. The Leadership Challenge, they are written by two guys based on research. 
Remember, I am research oriented. I love to see the impact of, of concepts, of theories. So the readership challenge, and I will give them to Nadine. So this is inspired, all of what you have seen inspired by this. The second one is also influenced me, the seven habits of effective people. I know that it's old, but this is something that inspired me. And I got the training by Stephen Covey, remember at Accenture. So these two books, and a third book that, um, uh, because I am uh, into innovation and thinking in a different way, uh, there's a book called A Blue Ocean Shift. For all of you guys, Blue Ocean Shift. And the fourth book, Made to Stick. When you want to have a product or a solution to stick. These are the four books, The Leadership Challenge, Seven Habits of Effective People, Blue Ocean Shift, and for, uh, the fourth, Made to Stick. And I want to say, Kaman, we are a business book club. Hala, the first book already assigned, but the next book is going to be The Blue Ocean Shift. We'll send you an invitation to give you a copy of the book, and then you can join the session when, where we discuss uh, the book. All of you are more than welcome to join uh, the book club, Kaman. It's a business uh, book club. Because I know all of you guys are innovative companies. Blue Ocean Shift, they have you can buy an introduction to it uh, for, uh, for $240. There's one year uh, you can go into the videos. And all stuff. I encourage everybody because it gets you to think in a different way. And all the time, maybe you, I all, I'm obsessed in finding an unfair advantage. Unfair advantage, unfair advantage, whether in my location, in the, in the value proposition, the people I hire, how I hire them, the way we launch our products, we serve our customers, the customer journey, everything look for the unfair advantage. And my opinion, and this is from the heart, guys, if you take what I have spoken to you today and I shared with you, and you think of the five practices and the behaviors, and you say, I'm going to start applying them and I'm going to create an unfair advantage for me as a leader and for my company. You will make my day. Yes. Thank you. Now we want to sign off, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank had to sign off is in old style, huh? We don't just do something nice. <laughs> sign off with a sign. But everyone, we're going to be sharing a survey uh, shortly. So whoever was not registered uh, earlier, please provide us with your emails. <laughs> uh, we can. Yes, yes, Maher, had the first session. Uh, stop, I think Sorry, but Jayin, I'll have three slides. Adi, Adi, if I tell you, yeah, pull them, ah, put them, we want to add up at him. The Rab of the Semi as enemy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, dear man, for your time. Sign off with style. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.